verse 675. As faults and defects are sought, the principle is not established, nor is the mind properly set to work. This is due to the rising of dualistic notions. Non-duality is suchness. Well, this verse seems a little bit vague, doesn't it? But again, it's all to do with enlightenment practice. It follows on in the same spirit as the previous verse, which was concerned with the Svabhavas. And this is when the attention is caught up with the sort of thing it's normally caught up with, which is basically the world and our moods. This is what we inhabit most of the time. We inhabit a particular psychology, which has got its own patterns, and we inhabit a particular culture, a particular environment, and we cannot be happy with this. We will always find things wrong. So as faults and defects are sought, the principle is not established. And I think the principle here must be that of enlightenment practice. We're not practicing when we're caught up with finding things wrong. When we're, when we're caught up with being dissatisfied. And we're told the mind is not properly set to work. The mind is what can be directed to practice, to practice realization. But when the mind is preoccupied with dissatisfaction, then it's a bit of a waste, isn't it? The mind can be directed to that awareness which in recent verses has been described as the realization of the subjective nature of everything. Then this realization is freedom, freedom from our moods, freedom from the habit energy of our moods and freedom from the world that propels them, the world of faults and defects. This is reminiscent of the bodhicitta, the turning to enlightenment or the will to enlightenment. Is the mind preoccupied with fueling its moods by saying, look at the state of the world. What a terrible world we live in. All this killing, all this fighting, all this struggling, all this suffering. Well, that's going to depress you, isn't it? Or make you angry or whatever. Or you can direct it to spiritual realization. or better still, realization of how things really are. And how things really are is that you're completely free to feel as happy as you can. Well, there's no limit. The only limit is your own mood tone. But we can knock this mood tone on the head and fly free. So when the mind isn't properly set to work, we're told that this is due to the rising of dualistic notions. And the fundamental dualistic notion is a me here, experiencing a world out there. We can forget this, forget this. When we forget this, when we no longer buy into this, then we've gone beyond duality and are once again abiding in suchness. 
suchness is this unbounded subjectivity. Let go of all the preoccupation with how bad things are. All that is, is an expression of our own mood tone. Observe this, observe this. And when you see it, whenever I see it, it's like a bubble of laughter just pops on the surface. All that stuff which used to weigh me down, grind me down, dissolves in a little bubble of laughter. How wonderful is that? You have no excuse, no excuse for finding faults and defects. Not when you're practicing anyway. Depending on what your business is in the world, you might be concerned with finding faults and defects. But when you're practicing, there is no excuse for it. There is no excuse for it. So observe how you give yourself excuses and you'll see how laughable it actually is. So suchness is ultimate glorious freedom. It's what I've described in the past as, to take another analogy, as the rainbow body. There's a great big smile in suchness.